How's it going guys? In today's lesson we're going to be going over type hinting and how we can use that in Python to make our code a lot more readable and a lot less prone to errors. So to get started we're going to go ahead and import from data classes the data class module and we're just going to be using that for demonstration purposes but it's good to have that. So the first thing we want to do is create a data class and we're going to use this to create some examples so down here, we're just going to create a class called user, which is going to have a username of type string and a password of type string. So immediately right there in the class, we're already using type hinting. And this just tells us that we have a username of type string and a password of type string, and that these are going to be strings when we actually instantiate this object. And we can also do this with variables, of course. So if we have a text variable, we can explicitly say that this is a string by saying, here it is of type string, hello world. And what that says is that this is going to be a string explicitly. And if you've been using Python until now, you might have noticed that it's not necessary at all because Python infers the type as soon as you assign it a value, such as a string, a float, an integer, or anything you assign to it, it infers it the moment you add it to the variable. And the main reason to add it to variables is just to make sure that you know what it is and it also gives you extra context options when you are working with functions. But the basic way to create a type hint is just to type in the variable name followed by a colon, followed by the type, and then you just add the value of that type. And you're only going to be allowed to add that type. So it's a very good way to verify that what you're adding to that variable is exactly that type. So here we can go ahead and type in Mario and the password is going to be Luigi123. And by providing type hinting, it really tells us that we're only allowed to add this. If we try to add something such as a string, it's going to give us an error. So it explicitly tells us that we're not adding the right data type. But so far, we've created a few examples that could easily have gone without having the type hint. Now let's go ahead and create an example that could really use a type hint, such as when we create a function. And this function is just going to print a list of users. So print users, and inside here, we're going to insert some users. Now, if you're used to adding a variable just like that, you might have noticed that when you refer to users, it's really hard to work with that because it doesn't give us any context with the item that we've provided. And we want to be able to use the users the way we've defined it. We want the list to know that it is a list of users. So to get that extra context, we would go ahead and give it that type hint. So it's going to be a list of user. And this also helps prevent us from inserting the wrong list into the function. So inside here now you can go ahead and type in users and it's going to give us all of the appropriate context methods that come with the users. So that's really helpful for our code editing. Now we can also go ahead and loop through it. So for user in users, we're going to go ahead and print the username and the user.password. Now we can go ahead and create a list of sample users. So sample users, which is going to be type of list of user. And I would generally only do this when you really want to demonstrate that you're using a certain data type, when something like this is very important. So in this case, we have a list of user and that's going to warn people that they can't just add random strings like hello. It's not going to accept that because it is a string. What we want is to insert some users. So for this example, I will have a user of Mario and a user of Luigi. And that's going to work perfectly fine. So now we can go ahead and call the function that we've created right above. And if we go ahead and print users and hold command plus P, you'll see that it's waiting for a list of user. And if you try to pass a list of anything else, such as a list of string, it's going to say, hey, we're not expecting that. And if you insert that, your program's probably going to crash or give you some unexpected behavior. So we're going to pass in the sample users. And as soon as we run this program, we're going to get a list back of our sample users. So that's a major benefit to using type hints in our programs is that we get that extra context when we create functions. And it also warns us in case we're adding a wrong data type. And the more warnings we can get, the sooner we can prevent ourselves from creating big errors. And this works for any function for as many parameters as you want. Again, it's not necessary that you create a type hint for each variable 
but create it for variables that might not be that obvious, such as a user. And if we create another function that says, say, hello, for example, and we say we want some text of type string, the benefit of adding that type hint there is that when we have the text, we can go ahead and process it with the string methods. So we can change it to uppercase, we can case fold it, and so on. If we did not have this part right here, it makes it a lot harder to use the suggestions from our IDE. And once again, if you don't have any type hints, the next time you go ahead and say hello, you can literally enter whatever you want and you're not going to get any errors and no added information. So this is a very good example of where being explicit can help your program be a lot more clear. Now, when you create a variable, you are not limited to only giving it one type hint, but you can even give it several. And the way to do this is to create a variable as you always would, such as a sample, and say it's of type string. And using the pipeline operator, you can go ahead and add as many data types as you like. So now this can accept a float and a string. So you can say string, and if you change your mind later, you can also go ahead and type in 10.0 or 10, and all of that will be acceptable. But what we cannot do is enter a user of type Mario with a password of 123, because it's expecting you to give it either a string or a float. So let's change this back to, let's say a string, and then we can go ahead and print the type of sample, and then we can go ahead and change the sample to a float and uh, we can print the type of sample. And when we actually go ahead and run this, it's going to start off as a string and then it's going to change into a float as soon as we assign it a float. And we can go ahead and assign it a user if we want, such as Mario again of one, two, three. And the program is still going to compile and it's still going to work, but it's going to give you that warning, which is super useful because as you can see, it still prints out with no problems. But what if you create a function that expects a string and you enter a number, you're going to notice that it's either going to crash or it's going to give you some undefined behavior. So being able to have this yellow text box that kind of highlights what you're doing wrong is a big bonus to your programs and just makes it look a lot more professional when you know what you're actually doing. So to sum this up, type hinting just helps us avoid making silly mistakes in our programs. And I definitely recommend it. Again, it, you don't have to use it everywhere. I mean, if you have something that's quite obvious, such as a text, chances are that it's always going to be a string. And as you can see here, it's going to say, hello world. This isn't something you're going to change that often. So you can easily just say text if you want, but it's definitely recommended for values that might get mixed up, such as if you only want a number somewhere, you might want to add the float type hint because it will just make life a lot easier. But anyways, guys, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's lesson. I hope you found this video useful, but as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next lesson.